his message is no matter where you come from, you know, with the right attitude, you can go anywhere. So, and that's a great message to spread. Well, my message to you this morning is about enthusiasm. You may not know it, but the word enthusiasm comes from two Greek words, en, which means in, and theos, which means God. So to be enthusiastic means literally to have the spirit of God within. I think that's truly amazing because all throughout my life I have done that without even knowing it. And this secret of having enthusiasm and how it gets you from where you are to where you want to be. And we have a lot of young people here today who have big dreams. They have big futures. And sometimes they're very alone in those dreams because other people can't see what it is they see for themselves. But it is that enthusiasm that will get them to where they want to be. Let me tell you a little story. In the 1930s, a young cartoonist named Walt Disney had just finished a cartoon called The Three Little Pigs. And it was, in that time, quite successful. The money that they had made from that, he and his brother Roy, invested in another feature called Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Well, they needed a lot more money than they had. And they were able to get to about half of it. And Walt turns to Roy and says, you've got to go to the bankers. You've got to get the investors here. We need about $5 million more to finish this. And Roy said, Walt, they've already given us this amount. They're not going to give us any more. And Walt said, just have them at the studio tonight. I'll take care of the rest. So they brought all the investors, all the bankers. They all came. And Walt Disney showed them the first half of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And then he personally proceeded to act out the second half. He was dopey and all the other characters and literally with his enthusiasm turned it all around. And when Roy went to the main banker and said, what do you think? He said, give him whatever he wants. And the rest is history. And that is now one of the biggest, if not the biggest animated feature of all time from the Walt Disney Corporation. So it's that enthusiasm that gets you to where you want to be. And it has nothing to do with where you are or where you've been. I'm living proof of that. When I was 11 years old, my father built a dream machine for my brother and me in our backyard. Now you may say that it was a tree house, but to me and my brother, it was truly a dream machine. And on summer nights, usually when the stars were starting to come out, I'd go out and sit in that tree house and literally dream about who and where I would go. And if anybody had reason not to dream, it was probably me and my brother. We actually lived inside our father's barber shop. My mom and dad made the decision that if they were going to save money on rent to make us go to, to so, we, so we would be able to go to college, it would be by doing that. And so we literally lived in this small space in the back of my dad's barber shop. But yet, I didn't feel like we were poor because they gave us all the encouragement that we needed and they were literally saving for our education. My dad really made more than $1.25 at the most for a haircut back then, the corner of Nolan and Pine over here in San Antonio on the east side. And I remember he would give me the dollar, and he'd say, go to the drugstore and get change. And I'd come back with four quarters. He'd open up this little cabinet between the two chairs, and in that cabinet were all these cigar boxes, which were his funds. One for tuition, one for the rent, one for our clothing, groceries. And quarter by quarter, he got us through. And it was his commitment to our education that took me to places I'd only dreamed of. And I found out at an early age that I had an uncanny ability to mimic voices that I heard. And I would literally hear someone speaking at the grocery store, and I'd start talking like them. And my mom would say, no, don't talk like that. Say, mom, that's the way she sounded. And I remember one time, I was watching TV after school. We had a little black and white Philco TV with a coat hanger for an antenna. You had to stand in a certain spot to get a good uh, reception. And I'm watching the Yogi Bear cartoon show. And Yogi always had this great attitude. Hey, I'm Yogi Bear, smarter than the average bear. And his little friend Boo Boo would always look up and say, 
Yogi, Yogi, we're gonna get in trouble with a ranger. He was always afraid. But in this particular cartoon, there was a little duck who kept following Yogi around and thought that Yogi was his mother. And he kept saying, Mr. Bear, Mr. Bear, would you be my mama? And Yogi, of course, says, get away, I'm not, I'm not your mama, I'm your bear. And as time went on, I kept listening and I thought to myself, wow, what a cool voice. Now keep in mind, I'm just a kid in the back of a dad's barbershop watching his TV show, and I don't know that the people who do those voices are in Hollywood, they've done it for years, they're professionals. All I know is that I'm going to learn how to do that voice. And literally for weeks, and after getting a sore throat, I kept trying it out. Mr. Bear, Mr. Bear. In fact, my mom, I do it for her every day. I said, Mom, listen, Mr. Bear. And my mom would say, Ah, mijo, parece Bugs Bunny, que bueno. <laughs> she didn't know. So. so there I am, trying it out, trying it out, and then one day, out of my mouth comes, Mr. Bear, Mr. Bear, would you be my baba? I don't have a baba. I'm just a poor little ducky. It was my enthusiasm that got me to that point. And believe me, I had the same shocking look on my face that you do right now. And I'm thinking to myself, is this just a fluke? I should try singing. Oh, say, can you see? Happy birthday to... Hey, baby, get my song! It was great. I can make this little guy say anything I wanted. And then I thought to myself, wait a minute. Where can I go where there's a speaker or a microphone and I can, I can actually try it out on people, not my friends, but people that don't even know what's going on. And there was a place called Frontier Burger, kind of like today's Sonic. And they had, of course, the same kind of a setup where you drive up, they got the speaker, they can't see you, but they're talking to you. So I had a friend, I had a car, I got in the back seat, we drive up and the guy says, Oh, Frontier Burger, I'll take the order, please. And I said, I would like a cheeseburger, I want to order fries, I want a Dr. Pepper, a hot apple pie, and make it snappy, big boy. Well, the guy apparently left the microphone on, because I could hear him in the back. Hey, check it out, I think there's a duck in a red car. <laughs> After a while, he comes back on and says, Will there be anything else? I couldn't help it. I rolled the window back down and said, Yes, would you be my mama? <laughs> Well, my friend was on the floor, and I was officially in show business. And I want to tell you something, that was what I felt I wanted to do. For the rest of my life, all I wanted to do was make people laugh. And one voice after another, I kept learning them, went to college, and ended up actually getting into radio, and found myself in Los Angeles, working at a radio station in Hollywood. And while I was there, and again, that enthusiasm took me there, an agent called me one day and said, I've heard you do all these voices on your radio show. Uh, have you ever thought about doing cartoon work? I said, are you kidding? Since I was a kid. He says, well, get me some, some voices and I'll see what I can do. And so I gave him a, a sampling of my voices. Two weeks later, he calls me up and he says, I've played it for these people. They love it. We've got a, a, a job for you. Here's where you have to be at 10 o'clock on Monday morning. Ladies and gentlemen, I will never, ever forget driving in to the parking lot from Ventura Boulevard of the Hanna-Barbera Studios, the home of Yogi Bear and Boo Boo and all those other characters that I watched as a kid, not as an intern, not as a visitor, but actually to work on the series they were bringing back called The Jetsons. So my dream had not only come true, it had surpassed. Again, it was that enthusiasm that took me there. Now it gets better. I walk into the room, and there's the original cast. And if you remember, the Jetsons had, of course, George and Jane, and they had Mr. Spacely, who owned the Spacely Sprocket Company, and that was George Jetson's boss. Well, what you may not know is the man that did his voice was Mel Blanc. Now, you young people may not remember this name, but Mel Blanc was the voice of Bugs Bunny, Elmer Fudd, Sylvester, Tweety Bird, and so many other Warner Brothers cartoons. And during the time that we actually spent, he started to mentor me and taught me the voices of Elmer Fudd. Be very, very quiet. 
I'm looking for a widow gray rabbit. And when I find that rabbit, I'm gonna tear him apart, whim from whim. Ha! <laughs> eee! What's up, Doc? Have you seen a widow gray rabbit? With big eyes? Yeah. And big ears? Yeah. And big teeth? Yeah. I ain't seen him. Ain't I a stinker? <laughs> oh, I tried to a pretty cat. I did. I did throw a pretty cat. You bet you saw a pretty cat. The pretty cat was me. Now, I apologize for spitting all over the front row here. <laughs> but there you go. And see, that's another thing about enthusiasm. You can't hold back. You got to do it. And think about every single one of you and where you have been in your lives and the things that you have done. Think about when you were courting your wives and how you knew that she was the one and you were not going to give up until she said yes. And, and, and to this day, you remember all that. That's enthusiasm. That's the spirit within. You know, we're celebrating this incredible uh, Battle of the Alamo and I have to tell you about something that happened to me. And again, enthusiasm and where you are and how you dream and where you dream has nothing to do with where you are in your age. I had a gentleman come to my office and he said he had an idea for something that did not exist in San Antonio. And that was a birthday. We were one of the only cities of our size that did not have an official birthday. Yes, we have fiesta and all the other celebrations, but we don't have a celebration of the birth of our city, which is about 276 years ago. And he said the reason was they have two factions, the Canary Islanders, who felt that the birth of San Antonio happened when the King of Spain sent them to set up a municipality in what we call now Main Plaza. And then there was another faction who said, no, it started on the feast day of St. Anthony, when the priest and those people came years before, and they set up the birth of San Antonio. And so his idea was brilliant. His name was Frank Jennings. He said, let's call it Founders Day and celebrate everyone who made San Antonio what it is today, all throughout the years. A brilliant idea. His enthusiasm led to other people getting involved, myself included. We went to city council, they approved it, and just last October we celebrated the seventh Founders Day. Now Frank died about three years ago, but it wasn't before he realized that dream. And I will tell you that when he walked into my office, he was 87 years old. 87 with a legacy to leave behind and literally not looking a day behind. And he taught me something that I will never forget. In fact, he shared with me what I believe is the greatest quotation ever outside of the Bible. In fact, I have it on my business card. And if I give you one of these, it'll be on the, on the back. It was actually said by a philosopher in the third century named Philo of Alexandria. And what he said could have been said today because it applies to every one of us. He said, be kind for everyone you meet is fighting a great battle. And how true that is. Who's to say that someone in this room is not suffering from a broken heart or, or carrying some really heavy burden? Who's to say that the person you see on a, at the stoplight or in an elevator or walking in the supermarket isn't in that condition? We need to be kind to each other. And I will share with you what I believe is, I believe, the secret of life. A few years ago in Los Angeles, I was coming out of a dentist's office. In fact, it was in Westlake, California. And there was a little lady, her name is uh, Mrs. Rosenberg. And I introduced myself to her because she looked lost and she had kind of a brace around her neck. I think she'd been in an accident and she was looking for her doctor. And I said, can I help you? She says, yes, I'm looking for Dr. Brown's office. Do you know what Dr. Brown is? I said, no, but let's go look in the directory over here. And we're looking and there's no Dr. Brown. And back then there were no cell phones. So I said, hey, wait, there's a pay phone over here. Let me call and we'll, we'll find your, your Dr. Brown. She says, you would do this for me? I said, well, of course. You know, she looked like somebody's mom. I would want somebody to take care of my mother if she was, uh, if she was lost. So sure enough, I called, and her doctor was across the street in another building. Well, there was some construction going on. I said, I'll bring her over. Now, keep in mind, we're walking across the street. She's holding me. We're arm in arm. Five minutes before, we were strangers. Now we're a couple. 
And as we walk across on this beautiful day in Westlake, California, I will never forget what she said, which I believe is a, is a secret of life. She said, you know, we're all here to help each other, aren't we? And that is it. We are all here to help each other. We are here to help every single man and woman that comes into our path. And sometimes you don't have to go and find them. God puts them in, in, in their path for you. I get up every morning and after I go through my whole ritual, I just look up and say, reporting for duty. And I know that someone is going to come. And again, someone's going to help me along the way. And someone has helped me. So my wish for you, no matter where it is you are in your life, especially here in this incredible building, incredible organization, and all that it represents in the incredible history and tradition, is that you will let your enthusiasm, your spirit of God, come out and practice the art of living with enthusiasm. Thank you so much for having me. Very inspiring. Very inspiring. Especially for our young girls. For our girls and men. <laughs> he's one of those speakers that at, when he's done, you want to just start clapping, say encore, encore, come back out and, you know, talk some more because uh, he's very enjoyable to listen to.